Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. It's spring here and the flowers are blooming, which means the fruit and berries aren't far away. In today's video, we're visiting the kitchen garden where I need to do a few things and I thought maybe you'd like to join me and we can also have a look around. To start off our look around, we're here at my John Gold apple tree. Last season, this tree didn't have any fruit on it, but it's bounced back beautifully. It's got stacks of flowers and beautiful little fruit already coming. Now, because this tree didn't have any fruit on it last year, I actually moved the, the cage that I had for the netting and put it around my second apple tree in the kitchen garden, which is my Crips Pink. So something on my list to do very soon is to build another cage. I've already been putting a, a cage around my peach tree that's showing signs of birds already getting at some of the fruit. And I've started to build a, another cage around my plum tree, which is in my uh, roadside swale which has got an abundance of plums coming. So I don't want to lose any of those. And already on this John Gold apple tree, I've found some king parrots, which really love to eat just these little young fruit off the tree. So when I get a, another pair of hands to help me, which makes putting nets around these trees a lot easier, I'll be getting another net cage built around this tree and also putting the net around my Crips Pink Apple. So this apple tree is the tree that I showed a harvest on back in autumn and I had heaps of apples off it and it looks like it's going to have lots of fruit on it again. It's had beautiful blossom and now we're coming with these young fruits starting to form. So within the next week I will have a net over this tree as well. In my last kitchen garden video, in addition to having a look around, I also planted these strawberry plants. Now it looks like it'd be a good idea to put in a few more strawberry plants because already the yellow buttercup is starting to push through the cardboard layer I had and uh, will start to take over unless I plant it out a little bit more thickly. I think with weeds like this in the garden, it would be worth putting just multiple layers of cardboard down and then the wood chip and the compost for planting your strawberries into just to help get these plants established before all of these weeds sort of find their way through that cardboard and return. The other thing I'm noticing with the strawberries that were just planted into the compost layer um, within the wood chips is the birds actually like to dig into that compost layer. So I do find I have to go around and uh, just fill in that ho those holes from time to time. But we do have little strawberries starting to grow, so that's pretty exciting. One thing I'll be doing shortly is harvesting all of this comfrey. It's just recently come back into life with its beautiful purple flowers appearing, but I don't want it going to seed because what I find is the plants just start to creep further and further into your garden and it's really hard to control them. So I'll be chopping these down fairly soon, even though the bees love the flowers, and I'm going to be using this comfrey up in my swale around my avocado trees. My rhubarb plants are looking absolutely fantastic at the moment with spring. I've got some really beautiful stalks happening in there and I'd be able to split this plant into heaps of different plants if that's what I wanted to do. I've got this one here which I took some plants off a couple of months ago and I've got another, well I've got several. I've got another one here, 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 because I just love the colour and the leaves in the garden. Um, but I do need to do a little bit of managing with the rhubarb. I do have a couple of rhubarb plants that are flowering. So it's best to chop the flower head off so that the plant puts more energy into its leaves and stalks. So that's what I'm going to do with a couple of plants today is just get right down into it and chop as low down as I can. Getting down right down here, I'm just going to sort of chop right down there. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to remove leaves like that as well, which really I've kind of finished. But that stalk will be fantastic in the kitchen. Okay, so those stalks will go to the kitchen, but all the rest of this material I'll just chop up and use as a mulch around the plant. Now, when you have a closer look at the plant, that's another flower coming. So I'm just going to pull that 
pull that off now to save me coming back to chop it later. While we're just next to that rhubarb plant, I thought I'd show, this is my walking onion plant that I thought had actually run away, but it's come back to life, although it has had a bit of slug or snail pressure by the looks of it. Now, when I first discovered it the other day, I just grabbed some comfrey and put it around. But I'll just grab a little bit more and uh, mulch it really well. That's the beauty of comfrey. It's very easy just to tear off and put around the plants that you want to look after. And uh, you know that comfrey will just grow back really quickly just from that point. And you'll get, you know, five, six different harvests from it throughout the growing season. And hopefully that will help look after our walking onions. During winter, I did a lot of work updating wood chip onto paths and all through the garden. So I don't have that work to do at the moment, but while I'm going through the garden during spring, I have a um, pair of secateurs on me so I can trim back plants like this. If these plants are just sort of getting into the way of a walkway, uh, it's easy just to come around. I mean, I could share that with family or friends or whoever, or I could put that into water and propagate new plants. But sometimes all I do is just chop it up and use it as a mulch. And it helps just build the soil. And I think that's a pretty good use for a bit of excess rosemary. Right next to my beautiful calendula patch, my rosemary plant and my John of Gold apple, I have my huge big blackberry bush just coming into leaf. This starts to leaf and flower a lot later than uh, my red currant plant, which you can si kind of see over there, which already has lots of uh, currants coming on it. A few months ago, when we were last in the kitchen garden, this was bare. And you could see that it was really sloping that way. Well, right now I've got heaps of growth, sort of upright growth here. So my plan is to continue just to prune off that side of the plant to hopefully get these stalks being the dominant stalks and uh, having a more upright um, plant. You can see there the beautiful little currants that turn this gorgeous glowing red around Christmas time and it's just a beautiful plant. Right next to it I've got a patch of lemon balm which is really looking beautiful at this time of year, growing vigorously. Now I used to just use this as a bit of a mulch but I did find that it takes root very readily. So being in the mint family you do have to be a bit careful of where you put it. Um, I used to feed it to the chickens and find it growing all in the chicken yard as well. So just be very wary with your lemon balm um, with what you do with it. It's great in a compost though um, if you've got an abundance. On the last visit to the kitchen garden a few months ago, my kiwi fruit were just losing their leaves. Now they're getting their fresh leaves and lots of beautiful growth coming on them. So I'm sure they'll be up to the top of this trellis before we know it. Now this one here is my female plant. This is the first time I've had kiwi, so I'm quite excited to see if this will flower. And my male plant is this one over here. And it's got new growth coming right up, up the top here. Now one plant I hadn't been too sure of in my last video was my passion fruit. And as suspected, this plant was not doing very well. Now it's definitely died, so I'm gonna be pulling that out today. But I have got another plant to, to put in. So I'm gonna grab that now and we're gonna get that in the ground. Okay, I'll pull all this comfrey from around it. And get rid of that one. All right, I'm going to pop the other plant in. Now, it's just a grafted black passion fruit. Full sun, so I'll get plenty of that here, hopefully. 
this one will do a bit better coming into summer. And I'll just water that in a bit. And to finish, I'm going to put some compost around it. Now, with my last video, I did have someone suggest placing a dead animal or bird, a bit of roadkill underneath the plants, and that was a great idea. I don't have anything kind of dead at the moment, so I haven't done that. But um, yeah, putting all that extra fertility under a plant is a great idea, and I have done that with a few other plants when I've had the opportunity to use sort of a, a small dead animal. And just to finish and stop the compost drying out, I've, I've put some wood chip over the top and spread that comfrey back around it. And let's hope this plant does better than the last one. So that brings us along to my lemon tree, which seems to have more fruit on it than the last time we saw it. And it had too much fruit on it then. It's really weighed down by these huge fruit that I do use, but not that many. And it's got lots of beautiful new fruit coming along. Now I have pruned it a little bit, but I think I still need to prune it. And I'm a bit nervous to take off this branch. So I'm gonna ask what you think. This branch here is really long. And if you have a look here, it's got an abundance of flowers and leaves coming. If all of those flowers turn into young fruit and they turn out to be this size, it's just gonna drag that branch down. And I'm sure it's gonna snap that branch off eventually. So my thought is that I should be just cutting this branch down here so that any chance that it's just going to break itself and then rip down the trunk is removed. Uh, so I'll take that one, which leaves this branch up here, which this branch is still getting a bit too long, but it might be able to cope with that if I keep thinning the fruit. So if you can give me a, your opinion on that, I'd really appreciate it before taking that off. A lot of these other branches have got new growth coming. So I'm hoping to sort of bunch the tree up in this sort of center shape so that it can hold its fruit without any risk that it's just going to um, break itself. Now, just hiding in behind this lemon tree, I've got another rhubarb flower, which I'll, I'll whiz off while we're here. And I'll just pop that as mulch on the ground there, along with some uh, leaves that don't look so great. One plant that I did deal with in winter was my boysenberry plant, which needed to be thinned out a lot. It had a lot of dead branches right through it. So it was a good time to deal with it while the leaves weren't on it and means we've got all this fantastic growth with an abundance of flowers. I've got bees everywhere on this plant, loving it. And it's just gonna have masses of berries come uh, usually at the end of December actually. And you just harvest it over a two week period and fill up the freezers with it. A couple of not so great things about boysenberries is it is a very prickly berry. Uh, it's prolific producer, but those prickles make it very difficult to deal with. And it also being a berry, it spreads via canes and you find little plants popping up everywhere. During winter, I did get around and dig up a lot of these plants while I was um, pruning it as well. And while I was putting down a lot of this woody mulch, but spring has revealed more plants growing. So I need to get around again with, with some gloves on and uh, pull these plants out before they sort of start to spread further and take over. So that plant there, if I'd left it, that's rooting at a number of different points and that's how easily they take off. You need to think twice before adding a plant like this that's really prickly um, into your garden. You're better off to have, you know, your raspberries or loganberries that um, 
really don't have those horrible prickles. Here's another one just here. Here's a, another one that I'll have to get in to dig up. Just on the other side of my boysenberry, I have my lemon myrtle, which I showed you in the last video, and it had been going quite well. It has shown some signs of cold temperatures in winter with just a few leaves uh, a bit crispy, but it's done better than any other winter and should put on a really uh, massive amount of growth come this warm summer season. And just next to my lemon myrtle, I have my mandarin tree, which last time had some mandarins that I was still harvesting on it. All of those have finished and it's got a huge amount of young leaves on it and lots of, of flowers. I still haven't cleared out any of the centre. I like the shape of this tree. Oh, look what I've just spotted in there. A little nest. Let's see if they, oh, oh. Look, well I might uh, leave that to the little bird, it's probably a blackbird or something and uh, we'll be on our way. I'll just definitely not prune any of the centre of that tree. Hopefully we haven't disturbed that little bird too much. I'll move on quickly. These are my gooseberry plants which I'm a little bit disappointed with. I've had this gooseberry in for years and I did move it and I thought this spot would be better because it gets more sunlight. But again this season I can't see any flowers on it. So I don't know what's going on with it. I have got some gooseberries up in my swale which are doing better and have got some flowers. So who knows? I've yet to really taste gooseberries, so I don't know if they're worth the effort or not. The plant itself's looking pretty good though. Now we'll move past the gooseberry and these beautiful borage, which really fill up this garden quite a bit, and onto another berry patch, and this time it's my blueberries. This is this plant's a different variety to the other five I have and it's later with flowering. It loses all its leaves and then comes back in spring with these beautiful pink sort of leaves. Whereas my other plants, uh, they really don't lose their leaves. They do go sort of a bright red colour, but they flower in winter and they've already got masses of berries coming on them that are looking gorgeous. And you can see the raspberries have decided this is a really good patch to be in as well. So they've joined the party. Now I also have three other blueberries just here, one, two, three, that I transplanted um, out of pots and into the garden here. And I think this is their going into their second um, spring season after that. I'll leave a link in the description to that video. But they're starting to put on some beautiful young growth and each plant's got heaps of berries on it. So I think that transfer was pretty successful. Now what I would like to do with these plants today is just pile up some mulch around it. They do have a bit of wood chip mulch, but I just like to add some pine needle mulch. I know I've mentioned that before, that's what I use. And I had success with my blueberries using that. So I'm going to keep going, even though it was suggested to me, it doesn't make a lot of difference what the mulch is. But I don't know, if you're on a good thing and it's working for you, I think stick to it. So I'm just going to pile up a whole heap of the pine needle mulch uh, around these plants today. I've got pine trees that aren't far away that I go and collect um, pine needles from sort of once a year. So I certainly don't over collect the needles and this hasn't made any impact on what's there. But it's a great source of mulch for plants such as the blueberries. And it's also um, great for in your compost. So I go up and collect not only the, the dry needles that are on top, but I also like to collect sort of the composting layer that's underneath it that's got um, lots of mycelium in there and I can't help but think it's good to add to my garden. So I'm just going to add a couple of bags around these plants today and uh, get them sorted. I 
It's a good opportunity also just to pull out any weeds, especially these buttercup, before adding the mulch on top. They've got to be happier with that. There's just a couple more small things I want to get done in the garden today. But just past my lime tree, which like my mandarin and my lemon tree is going great guns. There's heaps of beautiful little flowers on it. But unlike my lemon tree, this is getting a really beautiful shape to it. I have pruned it a little bit, but not too much. I keep pruning off sort of the lower branches so that it's sort of more up here. And I have trimmed a little uh, of the branches at the top, but that's going really well. Just next to it are my echiums, which are still growing fantastically. No signs of flowers as yet. I thought I might be seeing some flowers soon, but who knows, maybe they'll shoot up quickly. Um, but they're looking really healthy. One thing I did want to tend to in the garden today is this bay tree, which isn't very big at this point and that's how I want to uh, keep it. So it's got all this young growth on it. So it's very happy at the moment, but I'm gonna chop off a lot of it. I wanna keep this plant sort of at this size because you don't need that many bay leaves. And uh, I think at the moment will be a good time to get on top of it. So while we're here, we're essentially just going to do a bit of a chop and drop. And I'll take out some of these center growing points and just drop these to the ground. Mm, it actually smells beautiful. Okay, so that's enough. That should keep it fairly well contained. Moving past my bay tree, I just want to show you these beautiful Pacific irises. It's sort of just a grassy, nondescript plant all mo sort of for most of the year. But come spring, it has these gorgeous blossoms and just puts on such a beautiful show. Sort of late summer when the plant has stopped blooming, you can just dig up bits of the plant like uh, this bit here, you could just pull off and replant, dig up this, and you probably get five plants out of that. Uh, I'm gonna mark it in the calendar because giving plants like this is such a lovely gift for people and it doesn't cost anything, just a little bit of time and planning to get these plants out of the ground at the right time so that um, it will grow beautifully. One extra thing while we're here, I wasn't gonna do this today, but it's quick and easy. We'll just drop some of this rosemary to the ground like we did with our other rosemary bush. Just takes a minute to chop that off, get some woody mulch on the ground and get that little corner of the garden looking a lot tidier. The last little job I want to do today is with my chervil. The last time we saw it, it was growing abundantly in this area. Now it's already flowered and it's going to seed. Those seeds aren't ripe yet, but I do want to chop a lot of this plant down before the seeds ripen and spread them around because I fear it might take over. I'm sure there's already tons of chervil seeds in the ground already and I just don't need kind of this much extra. All I'm going to do is with my sickle, just take the tops out of a lot of these plants, even though the uh, color is beautiful. Look at that lime green and the, the beautiful purple. It's really lovely, but uh, I need to give space to my oregano because that should be kicking into life soon. Mm, it smells absolutely beautiful. It's all aniseedy. Uh, I'm going to throw this to the chickens up in the top garden and I think they'll really enjoy it. And while there's still quite a few seeds in here, I think with getting rid of the bulk of that chervil, it will give my oregano plenty of room to take off. 
Well, a little planting, pruning and mulching was all I needed to do in the garden today. So thanks so much for joining me. And thanks also for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now.